These budget phones are actually getting really good. I'm very impressed with the performance this low-cost device is putting out. I think they chose a great CPU to use in this thing. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Celero 5G Plus from Boost Mobile. Now this is a $150 device that I think is well worth the price here. In the past we actually took a look at the first gen Celero 5G. It's a pretty decent device and you could usually pick those up for around $60 from Walmart. 5G Plus version is coming in a bit more. Over on Boost Mobile's website it's $150, but you're actually getting quite a bit when you compare to other higher-end devices on the market right now for, you know, $700 to $1,000. This is a launch edition, so we do have kind of a special color here. Over on the website I think you can pick up the silver version, but as you can see we've got kind of that Boost Mobile orange with this unit here. And we do have some significant upgrades here when you compare it to the original Celero 5G. The display is a 7-inch IPS with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. We've got a Snapdragon 695 CPU, 6 gigs of RAM, and a 50 megapixel camera around the back here. So yeah, it's definitely a welcome upgrade when you compare it to the specs of the original Celero 5G, and overall it's not a bad device given the price here. Another thing we have that a lot of higher end phones don't have nowadays is a 3.5mm audio jack down here. We've also got USB Type-C. It does support a micro SD card. We've got our SIM card slash SD card tray over here. And on the right hand side we've got our volume rocker and our power slash fingerprint button. It does have a fingerprint sensor built in. And like I mentioned, around back here, we've got a 50 megapixel camera. Now when it comes to the specs of the new Celero 5G Plus, for the CPU we have the Snapdragon 695. This is an 8 core ARM SoC, we've got 6 A55 cores at 1.8 GHz and 2 A78 cores at 2.2. The GPU is the Adreno 619. We've got 6 GB of RAM, 128 GB of storage, plus we've got a micro SD card slot, and I've tested up to a 400 GB card in here. I haven't gone up to 1 terabyte or anything like that. A 7-inch IPS 120Hz display with a resolution of 1080 by 2460 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 15 watt quick charging capabilities, and this is running Android 12 right out of the box. One thing I would love to see in a future revision of one of these devices is a dual stereo speaker setup. Unfortunately, this only has a mono speaker built in. Overall performance here with the Snapdragon 695 is really snappy. It can't be compared to something like a Snapdragon 888, but we're really not paying those prices. This is coming in at $150, and you know when you compare it to 888 or even Gen 1 prices right now, we're talking about a significant discount on a device like this. The screen on this device is massive, coming in at 7 inches, and we do have that refresh rate of 120Hz. This can be disabled from software if you want to. And right now, really, the only bloat that was installed on this unit right out of the box was the Boost Mobile app itself. As you can see, we've got full access to Google Play. This does have Wi-Fi 5 built in and Bluetooth 5.0, and obviously we've got 5G connectivity. It's right in the name there, the Celero 5G+. Plus. This is one of those CPUs I personally haven't tested on the channel. I was really excited to see how it performs with gaming and emulation, but the first thing I wanted to take a look at were just some benchmarks that I usually like to run on these devices. And first up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 665, multi, 1799. Definitely fallen behind flagships on the market, but when you compare it to other similarly priced devices on the market right now, we are coming way ahead. A lot of those use, uh, you know, a lower end MediaTek CPU. Next up, we've got a GPU benchmark with 3D Mark Wildlife. This tests the Vulcan performance, 1,212. And finally, Antutu coming in with a 390,360. Not bad given the price here, but uh, these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to test out some real native Android gaming. Then we're going to move over to some emulation. And first on the list, we've got Minecraft. We're at 16 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and we know that this game's been on the market for a while, but some of these lower end devices do struggle to run it. This one's definitely not one of them. I mean, it's running really well, and I still like to throw this in because there's a lot of people out there that play Minecraft on their device. With this one here, you're not going to have a problem running it. Okay, so up next, we've got Call of Duty Mobile. We're at high settings and at 60 FPS. I think this Snapdragon 695 can definitely handle a game like this, and you might notice I am using a controller. I went with one of the cheaper Bluetooth controllers that I have on hand right now, because, you know, with a cheaper phone, you're not going to want to buy a $100 controller for it. This is the D3. Did a video on it a couple months ago. It's not a bad controller for around $15 to $20, depending on where you pick it up, and it'll definitely get you by with native Android gaming and even emulation. 
And the final native Android game I wanted to test here was Genshin Impact. If you've got a lower end device, you know how hard this can be to run. And right now on the Celero 5G Plus, we're at low settings, 60 FPS. You could go to 30 medium if you want to, but I wanted to see if it would even handle 60 FPS. And as you can see, this is a very playable experience. I wouldn't mind jamming on this all day long. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and we're going to start out here with Dreamcast. I'm using the Redream emulator. We're at 1280 by 960, so we do have a little bit of an upscale going on, and I think we can go a bit higher. When it comes to this emulator, it doesn't take much to run, and going into it, I knew we'd have a great time with it. So as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you can run it with either Flycast or Redream at full speed. Checking out some PSP using PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 2x resolution with Tekken 6 here. And you know, with these uh, mid range or harder to run games, I'd say 2 to 3x is really the way to go. But with the easier to run stuff, we can go up to 4 and 5x. Now, given the screen's resolution here, I think 2x still looks great on this device. And even something like God of War Chains of Olympus runs at full speed with that Vulcan back in. So we're still at 2x here using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And as a lot of us already know, this is one of the harder ones to emulate. Seeing how we're running this so well, I mean, we're not going to have much of an issue with mini PSP games on this device. The next thing I wanted to test out was some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. With this, I'm using Dolphin MMJR2. We're at the native resolution, and with something like Sunshine, you definitely want to use that OpenGL back in. But with a lot of the other games that I tested, the Vulcan back in did perform much better. Now, some of these games, you know, do prefer OpenGL, some prefer Vulcan, but, you know, it's still really impressive even seeing an easier to emulate game like this running on a cheap handset. But what was more impressive was Automodalista. Vulcan back in, still using MMJR2. And of course, we do have some dips every once in a while. We're still at that 1x resolution. But overall, GameCube emulation really isn't that bad. Another one I tested was F-Zero GX. Unfortunately, on the harder to emulate track, Firefield, it really fell on its face no matter what settings I used. But, you know, just seeing any of these games running at full speed or super close in this case is really awesome. And the final thing I wanted to test for this video was some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. Vulcan back in, and with Gran Turismo 4, we're at 2x resolution. So with the easier to emulate stuff, we can upscale a bit, but you know there are harder to emulate games. And with the Snapdragon 695 CPU, we will either have to lower the resolution or turn on some cycle skipping like I did here with God of War 2. Unfortunately, even at 0.75 resolution, Vulcan, or even OpenGL with this one, we were under 60. And of course, right now we're still under 60, but it's a much smoother experience once we turn on a few of those hacks. So far, I've been having a great time with the Celero 5G+. Plus. I do love this bigger display. It's not on par with something like a Super AMOLED display, but the price really does reflect that. We're only working with an IPS here. I think for the price, it's a pretty good phone, and it's actually putting out some decent performance here with that Snapdragon 695. Would have been nice to see two speakers built into this. We've only got that mono speaker, and it's actually really easy to kind of cover that up while you're gaming. But overall, not bad for a $150 handset. I'm going to spend a few more days messing around with this device, and in the meantime, if you think of anything you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the Celero 5G+, Plus, I'll leave some links in the description. And, you know, if you go into a device like this and you're looking for a cheap controller, that D3 isn't top of the line, but you can pick it up for around 15 bucks, and like I mentioned, it'll get you by with gaming and emulation. That's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.